we have gone into a Splunk base. We've downloaded Splunk. It's now sitting here inside my directory. I've got the Splunk Enterprise Security app. If we look at the documentation, there's a few ways of doing this. Um, I'm going to take one approach. I'm not going to do them both because it's going to be a little more difficult to do. So basic principle, if we come over, let's grab the install. You can, Splunk only allows you by default to allow, uh, an ups, install an app that is so large. And Splunk Enterprise Security, IT Security Essentials, both of those are it's IT Security Intelligence, are both apps that are larger than D Splunk allows by default. So you can go in the back end, go to Etsy System Local, edit the local web config, or if there doesn't exist, create the web config and put this settings, max upload size equals 2048. And then you can just the install the app the same way you install other apps. It's um, considering how big the app is, I didn't want to remotely install it. I've already got it set up onto my locally onto the box. And so the next option is I can run dot slash Splunk install app and then point it to the file. And if I do that, it should install it. It's still going to take a little bit, but being local, it's going to take a lot less time. So uh, let's go run that command. I'm just going to go op Splunk. Oh, let's run it as sudo to Splunk. SU to Splunk. All right, CD home. I don't know if I can get there. Nope, I can't. All right, we're going to install with Splunk. We're going to do what we shouldn't do. We're going to install it with Splunk with admin. All right, clear this up and we're going to go up Splunk bin Splunk install. We followed that. Now we just should point it to the full file, which if we do is, yep, install app file name. And that would be Splunk Enterprise SPL. If I hit that, it's going to ask me for my credentials. And then it's going to take a little while. It's a, it's a large file. Mine, this one was 800 megs. And so it takes a little bit to uh, run. I may just, I'm just going to skip forward until we actually have it installed. All right, it's installed. We can now go into our Splunk instance. And let's just restart, do Splunk here. There's enterprise security. And now we're going to continue to app setup page. Nothing here to worry about. If you are, do you have technology add-ons that need to be in there? Uh, you'll need to install them. Um, I'm not going to. I don't need them because I use Cribble, and Cribble turns all my stuff into uh, SIM compliant. I highly recommend using Cribble. Uh, you can download the TAs and try to get them uh, compliant. I have lots of videos on data models and aliasing and getting stuff into data models. Feel free to reference those. Um, anyway, I'm going to start the configuration process. Yes, let's enable SSL. Splunk Enterprise Security. Imagine that a security product that wants you to use secure uh, SSL. They want you to use SSL. So we turn that on, and there's going to be a lot of waiting. It's always positive. We get lots of errors to begin with, but we just sit and let it run. All right, the setup complete popped up, and now it's going to tell me to restart Splunk. So I will do that. One of the things to pay attention to is it's, if you're not careful, you'll you'll get thrown off by the fact that it's going to switch from HTTP to HTTPS. And so I want to make sure that if it doesn't, which it probably won't, you never know, Splunk is, continues to change and upgrade, but most likely I will not actually get back to Splunk because it will want to use SSL instead. Another thing you can do if you're concerned that Splunk is taking too long to restart, you're not sure what's going on, you can always come on the back end here. Let's go up, and we, we see it, ops, it's done, but we can always do op Splunk, bin Splunk status. It tells me that Splunk is running, we're all good to go, but we'll notice I'm disconnected from Splunk server, and I'm not going to get back because I need to flip 
as I said before, from HTTP to HTTPS. There we go. All right, I go advanced, accept the risk and continue. And put my credentials in. Enterprise security, notice it installed Splunk machine, machine Learning Toolkit. And Splunk's up and going. The error messages are all gone. The system's happy. And we now have Splunk Enterprise Security up and running. The next step is to actually get the data in and make sure it's data modeled correctly, et cetera. I'm also going to need to make sure that I set settings. I need to have, I have put forwarding and receiving. I did this beforehand. I did it while I was waiting for stuff to download. I went and I configured forwarding. You're going to need to configure forwarding wherever you want. You don't want the logs sitting on enterprise security. So I pushed it to my uh, indexer. That's a good practice. You'll also want to turn on um, distributed search. And you'll want to make sure that it can search. It has a search peer at least. Where is your data being stored? As a general rule, your main indexer, your main search head should not be a Splunk Enterprise instance. It should be, uh, it shouldn't be your main search head. You should have a search head and Splunk Enterprise Security, two different instances. So I'm going to push, point this to And I'm probably going to get licensing issues. This moment. Ah, no big deal. It's searching. It's getting the messages back. That's good. Those are messages that always show up on my uh, instance. So if I go here and I go run a query, I should be able to see index equals internal. Source type equals Splunk D. And if I do stats count by host, I should be able to see a bunch of machines because I'm actually searching my indexer. Yep, and there's my machines talking home. All right, so we've got it set up. It's now able to search. It's able, it's indexing its stuff off to the indexer. It's just sending them out there. Um, you can join it to its license. Make sure you get your licensing set up. Either add it, change to a peer, or set it up to point so that you point it to a license server, or give it its own license, whatever you may need. Um, you should, if you paid for it, you should be you should have a Splunk Enterprise, you should have an uh, Enterprise Security license, etc. So anyway, uh, get those licensing set up and tune into the next video in this uh, uh, this playlist and we'll start discussing getting our data showing up in the different dashboards. Hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And if this is useful, uh, subscribe uh, to the channel, like, everything, every bit helps as, uh, as I can grow this channel and make it more successful and reach to other people. Thanks so much, hope to hear from you soon.